Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how's it going this fall? Or we're almost into fall. Are you seeing any patterns that you can recognize? Is there anything going on that gives you expectations or perhaps high hopes? Or maybe not. <laughs> so we'd like to tap into what the energies are about what's going on around us. And to help us do that, I've asked a wonderful master of tapping in to patterns of reality through intuition and all kinds of divination. And she's an urban priestess and a vision coach. So I'm very happy to introduce and welcome Barbara Bijou to Energy Stew. Barbara, welcome. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Peter. It's great. You know, this is an opportunity that both of us love, is to talk about our, what, how we vision and what we're seeing and how we can communicate it to others. Mm -hmm. And you're a, a really well-known communicator. You lead a very active workshops, and a lot of people are very interested in your, in your mind, <laughs> in your higher mind. <laughs> and so we're going to see what your higher mind is talking about. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Off we go. Yeah. Right. And so um, we're looking at, at divination. You're a diviner. Uh, I love to use what I call tools, divination tools. I also have, have my intuition as well that I tap in intuitively. Uh, as well as using tools like, and we'll talk about it later, like the I Ching and uh, the Destiny cards. And you are uh, really excellent in uh, asking questions and seeking answers through your ritual experiences, right? I am, and I know it's not your way of doing it, but I love rituals. I really do. Right. I always say that I'm ritually challenged. <laughs> You're surrounded by rituals, so you don't have to do it yourself. Right. Well, I do brush my teeth all the time, and those, <laughs> I have my own rituals. But I, I'm more of a freewheeler. I can tap into the universe just at will any time during the day or night. And uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. And uh, I've asked the other side if I need to be more formal about it. And, and they didn't understand why I should. <laughs> but I know that a lot of people love to be more formal in the, in the ways that they work with the universe through ritual. And, and you're a good friend of my wife, Deborah, and she also loves ritual. And the two of you ritualize together. Right. And I just have to say, though, when you say formal, I mean, talking about your wife, you know, we'll have one of our rituals is to have breakfast together every, you know, month or two. And during breakfast, we literally take a breath and pick cards for each other and get information. So it's not like it's this long, involved, formalized, we're not lighting candles, we're not chanting, you know, we just truly just take a deep breath connect, unplug from our kind of chattery mind, and then read each other. So that's our ritual, and it's really simple. So it doesn't have right. to be complicated. That's well, good. And, and yet the intention of the moment is there. So yeah. you're making clear that you're in this particular moment. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really, for me, intention is the key to the whole thing. Intentionality is the science of the 21st century. You know, it's the spiritual technology for me. And I go there all the time. Right. People say, well, how can I be intuitive? And it's really about first have the intention. Just know that if you have a blank mind and you have the intention of a question, whatever comes to mind is going to be fitting. Right, right. <laughs> and you can't skew it because you don't like it. You're not going to pick a card and say, I don't like that card and throw it away and pick another card because then it's not real. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, speaking of cards, I, I did pick a card about this coming fall. Uh -huh. And I asked um, just 
what's the nature of reality for this fall, for our country, really. It's um, not for the whole world. And I, I shuffled and drew from the 52 card deck and I came up with the three of diamonds. And what does that mean for this fall? And the three is all about action. It's, it's the juggler, the three balls in the air. And diamonds is the material life, the, the real world that we're in. And so this means that there's going to be an awful lot of balls in the air, juggling, and action going on that could be helter-skelter. It's not, three doesn't lead to uh, any, any real foundation. That, that would be the four. <laughs> right. And so the three uh, leaves us open. As a matter of fact, our current president is the three of diamonds. That was, he, he's been born to that. Interesting. So it makes sense, and we're coming into a three of diamonds fall that will represent that. And um, what does it mean? Well, it makes sense that life, life in our country right now is ca very chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I was just pulling a card while you're talking, and I really love using Egyptian cards. So I got the card of Seth. So this is the constructive use of chaos, that how do you take that energetic and really move it in a direction that can move you forward as opposed to just throw you or keep you in confusion. And I've been feeling that a lot. I don't know if you have, especially with the hurricanes and the earth talking that I, what I really getting in meditation is that there is this, the universe is trying to give us a higher frequency of energy and a lot of people aren't taking it. So it's going into the earth and it's so strong into the earth that it has to come out someplace. So part of it is coming out in these massive storms and disruptions. Right. And it's not necessarily a bad energy. It's just that we haven't kind of integrated it. So it's kind of gone wild a little. It's and not it's, grounded. Right. It's very confusing to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And our, our minds are spinning more. Right. We don't know wh where to land. Right. Yeah. We, so we really don't know where to land. And um, I, as I was telling you before, I mean, I go back and forth between leading spiritual groups and corporate groups. And I'm finding that my quote corporate, especially these young millennials or Generation Z who are just entering, are desperate for answers. Desperate. It's like they're talking to me about their deepest, darkest secrets in the middle of a corporate seminar with 70 people, which is basically unheard of because they have no one to talk to. They don't know what to do with all this energy. They don't know where to go. Well, actually, my sense is that there's no one to talk to except it has to come from them because they're the future. Right. And they they're, they're the, going to have the answers that the older people don't have. Right. The older people seem to be running in circles. For sure. Yes. So it's, it's great, actually, that you have the opportunity to, to work with these people. And even though, you know, even for them, there's no answer yet, they're just watching the, the bad news that's going on. <laughs> right. But then you go back to your intention. What you talked about in the beginning is that, for me, my intention is to give them some really practical spiritual tools that will ground them enough to find their own answers. And when we talk about intuitive and predictions and what's going on and seeing signs or symbols, unless you're that quiet and out of the monkey mind, you miss it. You miss what's going on. Right. And, and I think we're, so we're talking about having to go deeper to find answers. It's not on the surface. Right. And, and we're looking at the overall patterns of life that we're in now. And, and actually, the Mayans predicted that we'd be in this decade of chaos. Right. Uh, right now. A thousand years ago, they predicted this decade, we'd be going through this. Yeah. And, and they also showed us that the only way out is to go within. Exactly. 
and yeah. what is within. And uh, I'm fascinated by the, what the within means because I've been doing some shows lately on consciousness and um, and the multifaceted reality that we live in. And I, I keep on thinking about it because the outer world, the universe, is, uh, according to Max Planck, who was a famous scientist 100 years ago, he, he showed that the universe, the size of it is about 10 to the 27th power. So I know unless you're a mathematician, it doesn't mean much, but it's, it's 10 multiplied 27 times, not just 10 times 27, but uh, it expands. But if you go within, deeper and deeper and deeper within, it goes to 10 to the 35th power. Mm -hmm. So that's where all the other worlds are. So they're within where the quarks are, you know, they're within the atoms, and every atom has a within. So when people say, oh, other realities are, are right here, we just can't see them. Yes, they are. They're actually within each atom. And there are you know, almost like universes inside. And, and so we can access that through stillness, through intention. Right. And it's amazing how it reveals itself. So we can break the mold of the external world mm -hmm. through our consciousness. So isn't that, you know, why there's so many different teachers teaching different ways to go within? Because the ultimate goal right. is to get there and everybody has different ways to get there. And that's the beauty of seeing these different pathways for me. Right. And, and the patterns are pers uh, persistent through all of it. So that's why the cards and the I Ching and astrology, numerology, uh, runes, all these different ways of tapping into patterns really is true. Yes. And, and we've learned how true it is. Certainly you and I have had decades of experience working with it and are always surprised. Always surprised. And I'm always surprised too how, you know, I'll go back to young people because my son, when he was in high school, was having a lot of trouble. He was one of those troubled teenagers in a way, right? And one day he said he wanted to show me something. He's an artist. He had created a runic mandala, all of runes. And I said, what is this? He goes, well, can't you read it? <laughs> you know, <I'm laughs> like... Not really. I mean, I could do the runes, but I can't read the alphabet. He goes, well, this is a protection mandala that I did to help me and my friends. Oh, my and, gosh. I mean, he created this giant runic mandala that he just knew how to do, and he just knew how to read. But I think that's so true of younger people nowadays, is that they have gifts that are shocking to us. Right. And... And, and, they're, and it's getting even more and more powerful as the, the newer and newer children are being born into this world. They're here for the future. Yes, as you know, being a grandfather, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. My granddaughter is so amazing. And uh, her, I looked at her human design, and it shows that she's born to be a spiritual leader. So surprise there. Yes. Very exciting. But they are, they're bright, you know, they're really, they're bright lights. I don't mean just smart bright, but they're, they're radiant. And you could feel that radiant energy. Right, right. So, so there's a great opportunity for us to, to just witness the ride and not, not have to be pessimistic. Just know, you know, I always say that the phoenix will rise. We just don't know how thick the ashes are going to be that the phoenix rises from. <laughs> well, you know, to me again, um, and I'm sure you are too, and a lot of my meditation and my work on, because for me, my one of my rituals for me in my meditation in the morning, because I work especially with the third eye, the pineal, and the pituitary. Great. Right. So it's one is to really be seeing clearly. One is to 
kind of blast the Akashic record of old history, you know, with a lot of light so that it can dissolve the old patterns that may not serve, and then to open up to new ones I don't even know. So it's on that multi-dimensional level. And my question I always ask every morning is, what's the most important thing for me to know today? So that I can really be open if there's something that I need to pivot on or shift or to be more open to. And I think it's important for us to ask those questions daily. Right. And that's why we're asking questions in the show of what's the most important thing we can know about this fall. Right. And, you know, how can people uh, prepare themselves? So what uh, you said that you were meditating and you... Uh, had some uh, insights? Well, I, I truly feel that it's, I'm the eternal optimist. I really am. So even in the darkest of days, I feel that we could come through it. And the only way that I keep getting is that we have to come together. So yes, it starts inside that we have to get clear. I truly believe um, in ancestral rituals. I think the ancestral karma needs to be cleared right now. That to me is one of the main things I'm working on. And I notice as I work on it and other people I know are working on it, kind of things are just opening up really tremendously and giving new resources and insight and then coming together in a new way. We have to take action. It's not enough to just sit at home and meditate. Um, that's really crucial and important. And I think what I'm really getting is we also have to really take action, whatever that means to people, but it has to be grounded. You know, my kind of mantra is something I heard from Angelus Arian a million years ago, walk the spiritual path with practical feet. And I think that's really what's being called for now. And I keep getting it very strongly. And the word practical really stands out in my mind. You know, that we, we have to take correct action. Right. And, you know, we're in a time of chaos. So do we want to add to the chaos or do we want to help exactly. ground ourselves in each other? Yes, exactly. Because yeah. you could just see it. I mean, how people are like loose, you know, switches right now. They're just blowing up and going crazy about nothing. You know, New Yorkers have sidewalk rage. They get angry if people are walking on the wrong side of the sidewalk. You know, they really do. I mean, you go out and look, you know, so it's, that's adding to the chaos. It's not changing it or moving it. It's really just feeding it. Yeah, but as you said earlier, they're not ready to handle these new energies that have come no, in. They're not. Right. So it's like, I guess that's the key is how do you strengthen and even if you allow in a tiny bit, you know, you don't have to have um, an injection of B12. You could have a tiny little bit, a sip, you know. How do you, how do you open yourself up to receive it and integrate it? Right. And you know, so it's... And be open to more and integrate that and be open to more and integrate. It's not about just blowing people open and leaving them hanging. And I think a lot of workshops in the past that I've seen in spiritual workshops blow people open and then say goodbye. And then what are they, 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 they don't know what to do with it. They're wide open, they're vulnerable, and they don't have the resources to integrate the next step. And that's really crucial now. Right. And that's an interesting point because before the show, I, I threw a hexagram. <laughs> I don't know. If I'm, you know what it means, but yeah. the audience doesn't. It means I, I consulted with the Chinese I Ching. Right and ask for which of the hexagrams is relevant to the question I'm asking, which is what are the energies of this fall that we need to understand better? And it came up with a very clear hexagram about it. And it wasn't complicated. Uh, sometimes when you throw a hexagram, you have changing lines and you know, it gets, and, and then you, you end up with, with a second hexagram and they, but it's always amazing insights. It, it just can be deeper than uh, just one hexagram that doesn't have changing lines. And that's what I got, a simple hexagram. And it was the fourth one, number four, which is youthful folly. Mm. And what that really means is that 
it's, it's the three of diamonds at work, is that we're in a time of learning. Youthful folly oh, is right. where we're seeking knowledge. We're, we're, you know, we're trying to figure things out, but we don't know enough yet. We haven't found our, our foundation to draw from. And that's what's happening with all these changing energies. People don't feel their foundation anymore. Right. They're seeking new ones and they don't know where to go with it and they get crazy about it. And that's the time we're in, is youthful folly, where we're seeking logic. And, and actually in, in the human design system, the fourth hexagram is known as the hexagram of logic because youthful folly has to lead to understanding, to, to, to knowing and being logical. But we're not yet. <laughs> no, we're definitely not. And again, in, in a lot of work that I'm doing, I'm finding that people are, who are on this path are becoming more and more empathic and don't really know how to protect their energy. So they're like sponges and they're you know, sponging up all this other stuff. And there's a lot of clearing of energetic cords that need to, needs to happen. Yeah, and I think part of it is that we also need to express and experience love with each other. And that can ground us a great deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I was at something the other night and the woman was talking about, to her, the whole key was being able to open to receiving love. You know, that it, we're pretty, all, most of us are pretty good at giving, but we're not that great at receiving. You know, we're better at the giving out and we have to be able to fill our own well, so to speak. Right. And the more we have it, the more we radiate it and the more we can ground it. And to experience it as unconditional. Because mm -hmm. you know, we are, we're in chaos. So yeah. if we're trying to figure out love and test everybody about it and all that, will find disappointments yes and instead it, it might just be like how can i just honor everyone as much as i can mm -hmm. yeah you know there's a wonderful ritual for people who like rituals that i learned in hawaii a million years ago and it's really simple and it's a gratitude ritual and what you do is when you go out everything you see and you decide if you're going to do it for two minutes or two hours everything you see you bless so you bless the trees for giving you know oxygen you bless you know the crazy person on the street for a great color shirt they're wearing you bless you know the bus for taking people by the end of this ritual you are in a state of really gratitude and love and people yeah, around you feel it and you could just see the changes it's pretty amazing and it's so simple and no one even has to know you're doing it right and that's that I, I like that a lot. I for me it, it's more that I just feel gratitude. I was out for a run this morning, it was such a beautiful day. I was just in love with everything I saw, you know, everyone I passed, every part of nature. It was just so gratifying. Mm -hmm. And uh I I just you know, I'm glad that you said what you said because it was like, yeah, I guess I was doing that. I just was less conscious about it than you might be. Well, to me, that's what ritual does. It makes it conscious. Yeah. You know? right. and again, you know, yes, you know me. I could do a weekend ritual. However, I like doing these quickie ones, too. <laughs> they work. Good. Well, the show is a ritual. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, Barbara Bijou, and people would wonder how you spell it. So, can you please do that? Sure, it's B I Z as in zebra, I O U, Barbara Bijou. And that's the same as my website, barbarabijou.com. That's wonderful because we want people to see all that you have to offer. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's so great talking with you. Uh, my mind is like spinning on so many things that, <laughs> that you were able to express. And, um, and it's really, I think it's important that we were, you know, we're understanding the process that we're in, the pattern of, uh, of our age now, of, of this time of our decade and, and moving forward and, and the process. 
And one other thing too, Peter, and I think it's very important that the male and female energies come together to partner each other. There's so much division about it. It's like, let's bring back the feminine, let's get rid of the masculine, or let's have the masculine and get rid of the feminine. I mean, it's not about that. It's about partnering, true partnering. Right, but all, all, out. but all that is a learning process. Yeah. And we're in the middle of, of identifying so much that we like and don't like, and that, I think that's all that information that's important. Yeah. So that's great. So, uh, so much fun talking with you. Yes, it is. <laughs> After all these years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've never really connected. Yeah. And, um, and, and my wife has been such a good friend of yours for so long. I know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so grateful to, it's a blessing to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, I feel the same. A great way to start off my day. Right. And so thank you, Barbara Bijou, for being a guest on Energy Stew. My pleasure. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.FM. I can be reached at Peter at HeartRiver, H-E-A-R-T, River.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening. <laughs>